In this video tutorial, we will look at an overview of the databases at levels 1, 2 and 3 and the tools available in CES EDUPAC. When we open CES EDUPAC, we are presented with the Databases window. From here, we can select the most appropriate database for our project. Level 1 and Level 2 are in the introductory databases here. If you scroll to the right, you can see Level 3 among other advanced databases. These databases are covered in detail in other video tutorials. Note that the databases you have available depends on the license purchased by your institution. Let's start by opening Level 1 by clicking on the tile. The first thing you see is the home page. On the right of the home page, you have direct links to video tutorials database information, extra and the education hub with hundreds of teaching and learning resources. Also, we have access to the material universe and the process universe tables. These allow you to find materials or processes of interest. On the right, we have different subsets. If we select the all materials subset, the left panel opens up. This gives us access to approximately 70 materials. So let's browse to a material record. If we are interested in metals and alloys, we can expand this folder. We now have the option of ferrous or non-ferrous materials. Let's explore the non-ferrous folder. As you can see, the main non-ferrous material classes are represented. We're particularly interested in nickel alloys, so we'll open its record by double-clicking on the name. Each record is displayed in the same way. First, there are images, followed by a brief description and the material's composition. The images show both common and technical use of the material. In the case of nickel, you can see that it's used as currency and also in high temperature turbines and toasters. After a short description of the material, general properties with density and price are shown. Below, we can see a number of mechanical properties. You will notice that some of the property ranges are very large. In this particular case, yield strength varies between 70 and 1100 megapascal. The reason for this is that this single record covers the range of property values for all the standard grades of nickel alloys. If you would like to find out more information about a property, then simply click the eye icon next to it. This opens a science note in a new window, providing a short explanation and definition. Scrolling down, there is a brief introduction to the underlying science and at the bottom, links to further reading. After thermal, electrical, optical and eco properties, there is information on the typical uses of the material and a link to the process universe to find processes that apply to this material. Let's now go back to the home page and look at the process universe. Here we have the option to explore joining, shaping or surface treatment processes. We'll start by looking for a shaping process. There are several shaping options available. In the molding folder, let's explore blow molding by double clicking on the name. Here the layout is very similar to the layout in the material universe records. At the top of each record, there is a picture and a brief description of the process, followed by a schematic of the process. There is then a section on material compatibility and an indication of the shapes that can be made with this particular process. Below, there is a section on economic compatibility as well as physical and quality attributes. And in the same way as with the material records, there is a list of typical uses here. At the very bottom of the record, there is a link to the Material Universe table which shows a list of materials that can be blow moulded. Let's now look at Level 2. To change databases, click on the Change button here, which brings us back to the Databases window. Let's select this time Level 2. Let's browse again through the folder structure. As you can see, at Level 2, there are now three records available one for nickel, 
one for nickel-based superalloys, and one for nickel-chromium alloys. Let's open the nickel-based superalloys record. At first sight, it appears that not much has changed. We have our image, caption, description of the material, and composition. However, from the general properties, we can notice we now have the access to the date first used for the material. If we scroll down, you can see that there are now a larger number of mechanical properties, additional thermal, electrical and optical properties, a section on critical materials risk, some processability data is now provided, as well as the large amount of durability information, and the amount of environmental data has considerably increased. Level 2 also includes design guidelines and technical notes at the very bottom of each record and where appropriate, a phase diagram. There is also a section on typical uses and one with common trade names. We are now provided with the same Process Universe link, but also a link to producers and reference. Notice that the reference and producers tables for all materials can also be found on the home page. Additional data is also available in the process records. If we navigate again to the blow molding record, you will see that additional process characteristics are included and below there is a cost model where you can enter parameters like component mass and batch size. You can also access the data we have so far seen using the search function here. You can type words and operators into the search box here to find data sheets in which this word appears. Let's have a look at level 3. The level 3 tile is situated here in the advanced section. Let's browse again through the folder structure. As you can see, at level 3 there are many more records available. The nickel folder now contains folders for different nickel alloys. Let's explore wrought chromium alloys, for example the Inconel 625, a material typically used in high temperature applications. As you can see, in a level 3 record, there is much more detail. This database is typically used in real-world design and build projects where a greater level of detail is required. As well as being able to browse and search for information, CS EduPack also provides tools to select a material or process for a particular application, assess the environmental impact of a product, and estimate the properties of hybrid materials and compare the costs of different manufacturing routes. Lastly, there are teaching and learning resources available on the Education Hub. In the following video tutorials, you can learn about the advanced databases and tools available in CS EduPack.